the subjects I always loved in uh, high school math was uh, the, the logic, kind of like logic proofs, if, if, if folks remember those. So it was kind of like if P, then Q, those kind of logical statements where if this was true, then this must also be true, or if this is false, then this must also be false. And it's probably not a huge surprise. Um, kind of the, the elegance, the, the beauty, the, the symmetry, all those things that go into a true mathematical proof and like a logical statement like that. Um, is something that I value a lot. It's very logical. Obviously, it's a logical statement, um, and it just fits and works so cleanly. Um, the world doesn't work that way, but it's beautiful to see it in some other form. So I've always appreciated that. And I've been thinking about that lately and how it applies to the softer things that I talk about, right? Not, not math, but how we think, how we communicate, how we form our views, how we try and uh, convince other people of our views, those types of things, um, particularly in a, in a world, in a society that's so divided as we are, right? Where for many people, the incentive is to not trust the other side. Um, you know, is there something we can glean or take from that, the, the logical statements and, and that, that whole framework and methodology that, that might help here? Um, so let me kind of lay out a scenario and kind of use that and see if we can apply it and if it, and if it'll hold and if it'll work. Um, so let's take something that's been, been in the news recently. So let's take uh, something I've talked about a bunch, the Rayshard Brooks situation in Atlanta, and let's take one specific uh, aspect of that. So one of the things that's a pretty controversial topic right now, or relatively controversial, um, is the arrest and murder charges, among other charges, that was given to the police officer who shot Rayshard Brooks. Um, and, and let's focus in, there's, there's lots of different places we can focus in, but just for the sake of this, and, and this isn't meant to be the perfect, right? I don't have every single detail or fact, it's more of a hypothetical kind of thought exercise, but let's focus in on the mayor of Atlanta for the sake of this, right? So, or, or the DA, right? Either one, DA, mayor, um, the, those public figures, have come out pretty strongly and pretty swiftly since this incident happened and condemned it. Um, the officer was fired almost immediately. He's since been charged, I think with 11 different charges, one of which I believe is first degree murder, which is a very serious charge. Um, and the rhetoric coming out of those groups um, or those individuals, the mayor, the DA, has been pretty strong. Um, that, hey, this is, this is the exact type of systemic racism we're trying to eliminate. It's another instance of, of a black man being an unarmed, as many as some would say, black man being killed by police by unnecessary force, um, and we need to fix that. So as a response to that, we're coming down really strongly on this officer, and we're going to do the right thing here, right? We're going to do the things that, that should have been done for years, and we're going to charge him and, and, and all that, right? So you have, you have that part of the story. Now, naturally, um, you can look at people who are ideologically on the opposite side of that and they don't believe the officer did something wrong they feel like his life was threatened and this you know Rayshard Brooks resisted arrest and threatened the officer so although it was a tragic situation it's not murder um the things coming out of the the DA and the, and the mayor the the rhetoric is wrong right and it's not um hard to, to to go down the path and have people who say you know this becomes a political thing and the mayor, the DA, they're trying to kind of virtue signal or they're trying to play to their base and they're trying to, you know, keep their power. And this is a big topic in their city right now. And they want to show that, you know, they're they're on the side, they're on the right side of, 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 of this topic. Um, so in other words, saying the reason you're stating is disingenuous. It's not it's not real. Um, you're motivated by something else. And I, I don't believe what you're saying. Right. You can imagine that being a viewpoint. And it's, it's, a, it's a valid point in that, um, again, let's look at it from a purely like logical mathematical perspective. If that were true, if let's say the DA or the mayor were politically motivated, were acting disingenuously, maybe they were you know just bad actors in this case, and they were trying to exploit a situation to, to build their own power, popularity, whatever it might be. The problem is it would look almost identical. It would look very similar to if they were actually doing it because they believed it. They would say it's what they believed. They would be very emphatic about it. They would be very, uh, in some ways, almost inflammatory about it and speaking out on it because they were so passionate. They would take these actions. They would charge the officer with murder. Um, they would hold a press conference to do it. All these things would look almost exactly the same. So, you know, you run into an interesting situation where from the external perspective, 
the person that or the group that, that doesn't believe you, th there's almost a, a logic to them not believing you because how do they decipher between those two things, right? But even for yourself, right? If you put yourself in the shoes of the mayor or the, or the DA, um, you'd almost have to, for yourself, ask that same question, right? H how do I know? What, what, you know, how do I know I don't have a blind spot here or a bias or some identity issue at play or whatever else it might be where I think I'm acting well-intentioned. I think I'm doing this because I truly believe it and it's the right thing to do. But if I did have some of those mental flaws that we talk about, again, it would look exactly the same. I would justify it in my head. I would believe it was true. I would have great certainty about it and I would act accordingly. So even for yourself, it becomes this situation of how do I trust it? How do I trust that I'm doing this in good faith? Almost, right? And for a lot of people, they want to believe they just know. And maybe, maybe, um, I'm more of the belief that we can't trust our minds that much, right? We need to test more. We need to pressure test. We need to check ourselves and question more. So kind of in that vein, to me, that's not a great answer. Although a lot of people say it, I think you want to take it a step further. If not to convince other people, um, for yourself to be certain. And you might say in this scenario, why does the mayor have to convince other people, conservatives, conservative white people who maybe don't even live in Atlanta, that, that she's acting in good faith? Well, you know, it's a good question. We can get into it in more depth in other, in other videos, but, you know, let's assume your objective is you want what's best in the world. You want everybody to come together. You want justice to be served because it should be served. And you want everybody to kind of understand that and see it, that this is the right thing to be done, right? You don't want to act just in a vacuum and say, I don't care what anybody else thinks. Let's assume that matters to you. Okay, so back to the to the mathematical kind of logical proofs and why I think it's relevant here. So you have this situation as I've just laid out. I think what has to happen in a situation like this where you can't prove that you are acting in good faith, you apply the logical statements and you, you almost have to say, what could I do to show that if I was acting in bad faith, if I was intentionally manipulating the situation or if I had a blind spot or a bias that I wasn't aware of, if that were true, what is something that could not be true if that were the case, right? If I was intentionally, you know, I, I didn't actually believe this cop was guilty um, and I was doing this more to play to my base, well, then I would never do this, right? If I just had it out for cops and I was trying to take advantage of the moment and I was just piling on on them, well, then I would never do this, right? What is that thing or, or set of things that you could do in very much like a mathematical, logical statement? If I did that, then this other thing can't be true. That's what you want to strive for. Now, as I said in the beginning, the real world is never as clean and neat as math. So you may not be able to find the thing that's at perfect, where it says, if I did that, then this definitely can't be true. There's no doubt about it. But again, you want to strive for it. You want to try and build that case almost of, of that for yourself as well as for others so that we can all kind of understand there's some good faith here. Because sadly, we live in a society where there's not a lot of trust in that. So again, let's take this example of some things, you know, just off the top of the head that might might apply to that. So if people think your objective is to just badmouth police and pile on and that, you know, you're just against the police, take some actions that show otherwise, right? Find some good police that have done some good work in the neighborhood, that have helped people, that have done the job the right way and show that. Show that you are acknowledging that, that you value that, that you think there's good there. Now, that's just an example, right? Maybe they believe in Atlanta that the whole police force is systematically or systemically racist and, you know, that's not the right option. Okay, maybe that's not it. But find something in that vein that says, hey, I would never do this if that were true, right? It, it couldn't happen. That can't be true if, if I did this. So again, just an example, I don't mean to, it's, it's more from the math and the logical perspective, but the second officer that was involved, I believe he was charged as well. I don't remember with what exactly. Um, for the sake of this, maybe that second officer doesn't get charged, right? Maybe that, in that case, you say, listen, if I was just out to get police, um, I, would, I would get the second officer as well. I would want to take everybody down. But I'm showing here in this case, it doesn't make sense to file charges on the second officer. His actions don't warrant it. And if it was true that I was just out to get them, I would do that, right? And again, I'm not actually debating the value of that or if the second officer should be charged. It's just an example of something you, you might do um, to, to show that. So I think you need to find those things. And what's interesting in this scenario is you can kind of play that out and, and even just take the two that I just said, right? And you could dispute them potentially, right? You could say, well, 
the first one doesn't work because the police department's systemically racist. And, you know, I, I think it has to be totally overhauled. So I don't want to publicize anything positive. And to the second point, you could say, well, no, 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 that second cop was there. They played a role in it. Um, it's just right. Based on the, the law here, he should be charged as well. And you can go down the list. Well, if you run into that scenario where you can't find that thing that says, if, if I did this, then it can't be true that I'm acting in bad faith. Well, you, you have to question it still then, right? It doesn't mean you're wrong, but it means you start to have, you have to question. If I can't find anything that proves this, then how do I know? How can I be sure? And at the least, that's where humility and rational thought should come in and you should acknowledge, like, I can understand why somebody might think I'm acting in bad faith here because I can't prove it. There's no way I can prove this other than that you just have to trust me and I'm doing the right thing. So that's why I think it becomes, becomes so important, that exercise of trying to find those things that would disprove this fear, this fear that you're acting in bad faith, as challenging as it might be. And again, if you can't find one, and maybe that's right, maybe there's certain situations where there is nothing that works in that way, well, then at least adjust your delivery accordingly. Acknowledge that. Address it in some way. Try and do the best you can to make the case and build the trust there. Because again, if, if your goal is to do the right thing, if your goal is objective truth and to make the, the world a better place or whatever it is in this situation, that should be the objective. Like you want people to understand, you wanna show your work, you want them to see why you came to this conclusion and that you believe wholeheartedly and genuinely that it is the right conclusion. So I think this is maybe something powerful that could help um, to do that in some of these cases.